of the um, lovely view of the clouds behind us, up behind there. Not got the sun. And hopefully we've got a link. Anyone there? That's right. Okay. Yeah. It's nice having the clouds behind us. Nice view. Go this way. Turn that way a bit, and then we'll head. All right. Someone's appeared. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And evening prayer. We begin on page. 16 of evening prayer in the book of common prayer <clears throat> i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart O god Thou wilt not despise. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, page 18 in the Cambridge Prayer Book, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We turn to the uh, Psalms in the back of the book for the fifth, the fifth day in the back of the prayer book version. And we'll read Psalm 28, Psalm 28 on page 377. If you just have a, a Bible, you can read the version in the Bible with us. It's very similar. Psalm 28, and we read together. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my strength. Think no scorn of me, lest if thou make as thou, thou hearest not, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my humble petitions when I cry unto thee, when I hold up my hands towards the mercy seat of thy holy temple. O oh, pluck me not away, neither destroy me with the ungodly and wicked doers which speak friendly to their neighbours, but imagine mischief in their hearts. Reward them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their own inventions. Recompense them after the work of their hands. Pay them that they have deserved. For they regard not in their minds the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. Therefore shall he break them down and not build them up. Praise be the Lord, for he hath heard the voice of my humble petitions. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart hath trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart danceth for joy, and in my song will I praise him. The Lord is my strength. And he is the wholesome defense of his anointed. O oh, save thy people and give thy blessing unto thine inheritance. Feed them and set them up forever. Amen. And we turn now to the book of Judges and chapter 4. The book of Judges and chapter 4. We read chapters four and five. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ahud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in, dwelt in Harosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, 
and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall be shall not be for thine honor for the lord shall sell sisera into the hand of a woman and deborah arose and went with barak to kadesh and barak called zebulon and naphtali to kadesh and he went up with ten thousand men at his feet and deborah went up with him now heber the kenite which was of the children of hobab the father-in-law of Moses had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent into the plain of Zaanaim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoram, was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Harasheth of the Gentiles. And all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword and there was not a man left. Howbeit, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, is there any man here that thou shalt say no? Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came up to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. In chapter 5. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoram, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. 
Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travellers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the village ceased. They ceased in Israel until the I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offer themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak, ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake. Utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Out of Ephraim, there was a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of Machir came down governors, and out of Zebulon, they that handle the pen of the writer. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley for the divisions of Reuben. There were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleatings of the flocks? For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Zebulon and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. The kings came and fought them, then fought the kings of Canaan in Tayanak by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the horse hoofs broken by the means of the prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. Curse ye Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Blessed above women shall Jael the wife of Heber the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. At her feet he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. The mother of Sisera looked at a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered her, 
Yay. She returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey? So every man a damsel or two? To Cicero, a prey of diverse colours? A prey of diverse colours of needlework? Of diverse colours of needlework on both sides? Meet for the necks of them that take the spoil? So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord. But let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might and the land had rest 40 years. Amen. Amen. But let us um, sing together Psalm, the one before the one that we sang, that's it, 27. One before the one which we read. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. And we sing down to verse five. Psalm twenty-seven. The Lord's my light and saving health Who shall make me dismayed My life's strength is the Lord Of whom then shall I be afraid when as mine enemies and foes Most wicked persons all To ease my flesh against me rose They stumbled and did fall Against me though and host and camp My heart yet fearless is Though war against me rise I will be confident in this one thing i of the lord desire and will seek to obtain that all days of my life I may within God's house remain That I the beauty of the Lord May hold me and admire And that I am his holy place may reverently inquire for he in his pavilion shall me hide in evil days in secret of his tent me hide and on a rock me raise. Please be seated. Oh, well, actually, we're standing again. We're to say the creed, actually. So we're standing. Page 22 of the evening prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us salvation O Lord save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee and do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful O Lord save thy people and bless thine inheritance give peace in our time O Lord because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou O God O God make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The fourth Sunday after Trinity, the Collect. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the royal family. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit. Enrich them with thy heavenly grace. Prosper them with all happiness. And bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we pray for the church, we pray for the 
entire royal family, the people of God, are kings and princes. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone worketh great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continued dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Yes, Everlasting. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's sing the, the uh, second part of Psalm 27, which we were singing. Um, oh, yes. We sing from verse 6. And we sing verse 6 to verse um, 8. Just. And now in at this present time Mine head shall lifted be Above all those that are my foes and round encompass me. Therefore unto his tabernacle I'll sacrifices bring of joyfulness I'll sing Yea, I to God will praises sing. O Lord, give ear unto my voice when I do cry to thee upon me. O so mercy have and do thou answer me when thou didst say seek ye my face then unto thee reply thus did my heart above all things Thy face, Lord, seek will I. Father in heaven, we do seek thy face. We seek thee, the living God. And we pray through the preaching of thy word, we may be drawn near to thee. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we may not fear anything in this world, but we may fear thee and also love thee and serve thee. We pray, Lord, that thou would open our hearts to the truth and cause us to turn away from evil and that thou would keep us. Lord, we need thee. We need thy Holy Spirit. Without thee, we can do nothing. We pray, Lord, for thy merciful help from heaven toward us. In the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're turning to the book of Judges, uh, chapter 4 and 5. Towards the beginning of the Bible, the sixth book, seventh book of the Bible, 
Judges chapter 4. And I had actually taken from my text out of chapter 5 the mother of Sisera, verse 28. The mother of Sisera looked out of the window and cried, cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? The tragic case of the son not coming home from battle and such a shock, to her, such a surprise to this woman who was ignorant of the grace of God and the work of God and whose son was leading an army against the people of God. And yet she looked out of her window, the sorry woman, saying, why is this chariot so long in coming? He should be back by now. It's troublesome for anyone when their son or daughter's out late when they're young and they don't come home on time. But this was a real horrid case. And her wise ladies answered her, yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Sisera, a prey of diverse colours, a prey of diverse colours of needlework, of, uh, of uh, diverse colours of needlework on both sides, meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. Thinking any time they'll be back with their new ladies that they've captured from battle. Terrible. Well, that's the ungodly woman. But we want to, well, we're warning about ungodliness, but we'll focus more on two godly women, the two wonderful women in, the, in these chapters. Now, we read again at the beginning of chapter 4 that the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. It shows that the people have got no power within themselves to do good. Whatever blessings they've known in the past, they soon fall away. And so would we without the Holy Spirit of God working in us, drawing us to need and depend on our Lord Jesus Christ. We would continually be doing evil. There's enough evil in us anyway. But without the Spirit of God, we are destitute and um, even after great things have happened, we saw at the very end of chapter 3 that this Shamgar, uh, he slew 600 Philistines with an ox goad. I've got a friend a bit like that down in Cornwall. I think he could do that. But there aren't many people quite as tough as that. But with an ox goad, you can see him going out and beating them all down. And he delivered Israel. But... It wasn't, it wasn't enough. They couldn't depend on men. They needed the Lord to be with them, though he was with, with such a man as that. And we're always glad when there are some rough diamonds in the church who will do some good. What is an ox? It's a, it's a, a goad is, is a thing for prodding an ox. A, a, so it's a big stick. Maybe, I don't know if they're made of metal maybe or wood, but very tough and they could push your ox to make it go so it would be quite a substantial stick um maybe you had little sharp spikes on the end i'm not sure and that would push it so it's a, it's a fairly good weapon but yeah not not perfect but it's sufficient anyway you have to be pretty tough to kill 600 people with that we're not here to advocate killing people i should make that clear but when there's a war on, you haven't got much choice. <laughs> when you've got a battle and a war, that's what soldiers have to do. Um, one day there'll be a day when there's no wars and there's no battles. But we have them at the present time. So then the man before them was Ehud, who we looked at this morning, who was another a deliverer for the people of God. But he died. And because the people again returned to evil, then the Lord sold them 
into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. The Lord gives the enemies of God the upper hand at times, just like he has in our country at the moment and in many countries of the world. And he, he works with these, uh, he uses the goad against the people of God. He uses what we read about on Thursday, the traps and the snares the, to warn people to be careful. But he also uses the enemies of God against the people of God. Um, and these things all work together for good. As we were looking at in Romans chapter 8, all things work together for good, including things, the worst things that can be against us. Now, the captain of the host of Canaan, the king was called Jabin and the captain was Sisera. And it's mainly Sisera that we'll hear about. His army was very substantial. In those days, chariots were the thing. If you had a chariot, that, that enabled you to get around very quickly and to cause a huge amount of damage. And they had 900 chariots of iron. In the time of King Asa, again, we looked at fairly recently, they had an army of a million Ethiopians coming towards them. And they only had a few hundred chariots, not 900. So it's a very substantial force that, that these Canaanites had. And he oppressed the people of God for 20 years. 20 years. We saw last time that after 18 years, the people cried out to the Lord. Perhaps they've forgotten to cry out to the Lord here. They, they were doing evil. And when you do evil, um, you think you can go on that way and you don't need to cry out to the Lord. And it's a very tragic time. And it seems that the, the men in particular uh, weren't doing any good. They weren't taking their role in leadership because Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. It's quite a, a rare thing for the uh, woman to be a judge. In the time of Moses, judges were appointed over different areas to deal with relatively minor matters. But for the major, major matters, they'd have to go to Moses himself. But they, that they appointed judges of, of, of a smaller um, power, as it were, just to deal with ordinary things. And so they had judges in different places in Israel at the time. Now, Deborah was no doubt a very great woman, a very good and godly woman. And she shows us a good role of women here in her encouragement and prodding, I think, even I go, she's got a goad as well. But she, she uses it gently on this man, Barak. He, we read in verse 6, she sent and called Barak and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulon? And we read here, that she's reminding him hasn't the lord commanded don't you know this he's he's somehow disobeyed it appears that he's not done what he should have done and she's reminding him of his of his duty and interestingly he is in a place called kadesh naphtali and i, I haven't got my references here but in the towards the end of the book of joshua Kadesh Naphtali is one of the cities of refuge. It's a hiding place. If you've accidentally killed someone, you can go and hide from the avenger of blood in a city of refuge. And that is where Barak is. So we're not told if that's the reason why he's there. But 
I'd like to be in a city of refuge. Keep my head down. One of our bishops was told by a man who went on to become an archbishop of Canterbury, if you keep your head down, you could go a long way in the Church of England. Well, maybe that was Bayrak's idea. He could go a long way by keeping his head down in a city of refuge. But while the Lord Jesus Christ is our refuge and strength, he's given us rest. He's given us peace. He's also set us forth into battle. So we've got this amazing combination that we're both at rest, we're in a city of refuge, and yet we're fighting a war. So both things go together. But for Bayrak, no, he's gone just to a city of refuge. So um, I was called a Barbara. Deborah reminds him to go and go and take 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of Zebulon. They weren't the biggest tribes. They're up in the north. They were in the area around Galilee. Isaiah mentions it in the verse chapter 9 before he mentions of the wonderful saviour that's coming because it's the area where Jesus uh, was in Nazareth and then in Galilee of course so there's something precious about these people going from this area and as we read in chapter 5 verse 18 Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field they were they went with Bayrak as well they had um faith they trusted in god's promises as we saw this morning when um ehud returned to the stones that were there as a testimony that god had brought them through the river jordan He'd given them a land of promise and they were reminded and they were made very bold by this. And so when we're reminded of God's promises to us and we can be bold in our Christian faith, we can be not fearful of what people think about us. I remember as a child, I was a sort of Christian, but I'd be very ashamed to ever say anything about the Lord Jesus being the savior that you need, maybe on the odd occasion. But when the Lord really took hold of me, I may be not as bold as I should be now, but at least I can feel that I could say to anyone about the Lord Jesus without feeling at all ashamed that we're speaking of people that are sinners, that are lost. We're all in the same boat. We're not the proud, boastful people of the world who've got everything and we know everything and we're all wonderful. No, quite the opposite. And we go with the Lord in faith. I think one of the greatest signs of obeying the Lord is a simple testimony that we can simply say just one or two words about the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to give sermons to people. They probably don't want to hear them anyway. But just to be able to say something that, well, actually, I've been kept through this coronavirus, not because I've been uh, drinking or because I've been doing yoga or um, hypnotizing myself or i don't know what other reason i've been doing i've been kept by god god's been good to me and he's kept us although it's been a strange time and for some maybe a particularly lonely time the lord's been with you and that can be your testimony because jesus christ has delivered his people from death and given them everlasting life and this world is fading away. It's, it's, to, it's, it's to perish. It's to be removed in due time, in the Lord's time, when the Lord Jesus returns. And there'll be a new heavens and earth. And that's where we are based. That's our base. And that's solid. Coronavirus doesn't affect it at all. It doesn't make any difference. And so we go, you see, and we take these words of encouragement. Go, draw toward Mount Tabor. And take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and Zebulun. And then, um, then, Sisera, uh, I will draw up the unto the, to the river Kaishon. Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, 
This was God's promise that he would bring the army there with his chariots and his multitude and deliver him into thine hand. So this, this had already been commanded unto Barak and yet he's been hiding in his city of refuge and Deborah is just saying, come on now. This is what a godly woman does. She wakes up the man. She encourages him. She doesn't discourage him. She doesn't lead him away from the Lord. She says, come on, you know, God has made promises for us in our life. We, if we walk with the Lord, and that is why in the book of Genesis, God gives the man, Adam, a wife. He needs a helper. It's not good for the man to be alone. Some of us are on our own a lot. Thankfully, we're together today with a few of us to encourage each other. And we make up for some of the time we're on our own. If you're a man or a woman on your own, you've got the church as well as other members of family. So Bayrak then is still a bit nervy, isn't he here? If thou wilt go with me, then will I go. But if thou will not go with me, then will I, then will not, then will not, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou makest shall not be for thine honour, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali, that's his 10,000 people that he's got with him, to Kadesh. And he went up with the 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. So it's uh, people have probably criticized Barak that he wouldn't go on his own without, uh, without Deborah going with him. But as I said, they can work together better than on their own. And it's a good thing when the men and the women will work in the Lord's work together. Now, in verse 11, we have a potential hindrance. And the Christian in his battle would always have potential hindrances. And here we see a family that is not what it should be. But nevertheless, we'll see another godly woman. Heba the Kenite which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zatanaim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoram, was gone up to Mount Tabor. Now, it's very questionable here what's what's been happening it says a little bit further on um in verse 17 the second half of verse 17 there was peace between jabin the king of hazor and the house of heba the kenite lots of names isn't it uh, it takes a job to remember them all but basically this was one of the relatives of moses who had become friendly with the enemy. They've made peace with the enemy. Now, we make peace with our enemies when they come to Christ, not when they're fighting against the people of God. We will seek them to be saved, but um, here he, he points them, he points the enemy in verse 11 and 12, verse 12, he shows Sisera that, Barak had gone to Mount Tabor. Now, it had been prophesied that he would go there, that he would meet him there. But it's not the job of the people of God to send the enemies after each other. We must be very careful with such things. Mm. So we see a very disappointing relative of Moses and the people of God here sending the enemy after their own people. Now, in verse 13, but we'll see that the wife was better than the husband, much better, very bold. 
Sisera had gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, verse 13, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And this is a lovely second encouragement from Deborah to Barak. She says to him, up. I, sometimes that's, that's, that's the only word that the woman needs to say to the man or the man to the woman at times, up, up. For this day is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera unto thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? The Lord goes with his people before us, with us, in us, after us. He's completely for his people. And um, so we should give each other such encouragements that if, if, if we go together, if we follow the Lord together, the Lord's gone before us. In all these battles that the people of God fought in when they went into the land of Canaan, the Lord was always going before them. They were simply to follow him and to obey him. And so when we're sent out, as it were, not necessarily to go to war, but just to obey God, he's gone before us. He's not told us to do things that are grievous to us. He's not told us things that are going to hurt us. The things that God says are good. So as we follow him, we can be sure he's gone before us. He's with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. He's behind us. He's on every side. He's with his people. He's for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Does that encourage you? I think it does. I can see some nodding already. But... Barak forgets this, you see. But Deborah, she's not his wife. You think they should be married by now, but it doesn't happen. But Deborah encouraged Deborah's marriage to somebody, someone else. But she's she's such a godly lady that she'll encourage other men as well as her own husband. Um, she'll encourage them in what they should be doing for the Lord. And this is what we need today. We need godly women. I heard uh, my old pastor. From years ago, he said, the world wants super with power women. He said, we don't need power women. We need godly women. They can do so much. that I'm not saying we haven't got some, but the same with men, of course. We need bold men. But we need the women to encourage the men. Very much so, as Deborah does here. Because she knew the Lord, didn't she? She knew the Lord was good. And she could encourage others. And we can encourage others that the Lord is going to be with us in whatever we're doing and wherever we're going. So off he goes to battle, and it's an incredible victory over this amazing army of 900 chariots, even with 10,000 men. It's, you, um, that's all, almost only 10 men per chariot, isn't it? It's such a big army with 900 chariots. 10,000 men is not enough to take on 900 chariots. That would be, you need about a million soldiers, I think, to take on that many chariots. But Barak pursued after them, and verse 16, the host of his Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. An incredible victory. I know we had some great victories in the Second World War, where a god... Um, was sought in prayer. The king, King George, called many, uh, several prayer days, and the whole country came to pray. What have we got today? What is our hope of this country getting through things without the Lord? It does seem pretty slack at this moment. Uh, but the church will, the church will prosper through this, through this time. If we encourage one another. Huh? No, 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 not the false churches and fake churches, but good. The true church of God will will prosper because the people of God will see our we will see our weakness, and we'll see the need to encourage one another. God is with us, and not just our little group here. He's with all all sorts of Christians all over the world. It isn't just in England that we're talking about this. We're talking about the whole world. There are churches in every country where people uh, will will be strengthened by people like Deborah. So be a Deborah. If you're a Barak, pull your socks up. Uh, be encouraged. Be moved on. 
The Lord is with us in our battles. The enemies? What are the enemies? If God be for us, who can be against us? It's a very encouraging chapter. And then Cicero, though he had his 900, the captain of, of the Canaanites, though he had his 900 chariots, when the last of his men fled, he managed to get away. And this is, a, this is a bit of a joke today, isn't it? How the people in power manage to escape the things that other people feel. But nevertheless, um, he, get, he gets away. And his alliance with this um, apostate family of, of Moses' um, relatives who have been very disappointing, he goes to them. He, he fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael, uh, this is the, the uh, wife then of um, Heber, uh, she goes out to meet Sisera and says, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. He asks for water, she gives him milk, and then um, covered him. And then, well, we've read that earlier, what happened. The, it's, it's a very grisly death, isn't it? We had, the, we had the stabbing of the man in his belly with the sword handle stuck in his belly and all the dirt coming out this morning. And now we've got a tent peg through the temple to stick the man into the ground. You think, well, this is absolutely horrendous. This is horrible. What am I reading about here? Well, it was, I don't know which one. If you had a choice uh, of ways that you would die, this is, this is a, it's an unsavory subject, isn't it? With so much murder around today. But as I said, this is a war. They're in a war here. And um, the enemy has come in. And again, this woman, she knows the fear of the Lord. She knows the, the, the enemies and the dangers, and she knows that the command was to destroy the enemies of God. This isn't something we do in a physical way today, but in, when they came into the land of Israel, they had a specific command to destroy the people of the land. They had been the most wicked and sinful people. And God was punishing them. And this is reality. This is the reality of the matter. That when she takes the nail of the tent, when the man's gone to sleep, and she puts the hammer through his temples, putting the tent peg, or nail as it's called, jail with the nail, right through to fasten it. Can you think of a more strange way that someone could be killed? The one this morning was strange enough, but this is even probably perhaps more strange but it's a victory and it's a warning as i say we're, we're not in such a battle as this today but the end that faces the enemies of god this is what it points to they won't meet someone with a nail putting a nail through their head they won't meet the enemies of God won't meet someone putting a, a sword, a dagger into their stomach. They're going to meet God himself. And in that day, they've got to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that his people, he welcomed them into his kingdom. He loves his people. He died for them. He, he, he saved his people and he'll bring them into everlasting, like we pray for the queen everlasting joy and felicity, real perfect happiness to come for those who will be honest with God and say, look, I'm a sinner. I'm unworthy. But for those like Sisera who fight against the people of God, who send armies against them, their end is ruin. Their end is ruin. And Jesus says they'll be sent away where there's not a drop of water, where there's everlasting punishment 
and darkness and misery and burning, a lake of fire. We can't shy away from these things. This is the reality to the enemies of God. And naturally, simply naturally, when we come into the world, we are the we are under God's wrath to, to begin with. It, it sounds very harsh, doesn't it? It sounds very strange. But the Bible explains that man has fallen from God. We're conceived in, in, in iniquity. It doesn't mean having a child is wrong. It means that we, 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 we're born sinners. And Adam's, Adam's sin is counted to everyone. We're all in Adam. It's, it's what we are. We're sinners by nature. And as soon as we learn, we go our own way in life. God has sent the Savior, Jesus Christ, his only son, to die for sinners. The Son of God came, was, was made flesh. It's an amazing account, isn't it? That the God, the creator, became man. Not the father didn't become man, but the son, the eternal son of God became man. And he was conceived by the Holy Ghost and was born and he lived a perfect life without sin. Did all good things in his life. Spoke like no one spake, did things that no one else did had power to forgive sins, to raise the dead. And he gave himself as a sacrifice for sin. And this is to be preached. And he, then after he rose from the dead, he conquered sin and death. He, that sacrifice for mankind was full and complete and perfect. And he should be preached to all. Turn to him. Turn to the Lord and be saved. The Cicero was hard-hearted. He fought against God. The Apostle Paul said that, uh, no, Jesus said to him when he saw, when Paul saw the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, why persecutest thou me? Paul was persecuting Saul of Tarsus. Paul, the Apostle, was persecuting the church. And Jesus said, why persecutest thou me? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved to the uttermost. Jesus Christ saves to the uttermost all that come to him. This is life. He gives life. Without Christ, a person is dead in sin. He's naturally like Sisera. He's under, under condemnation. If this wasn't so, Jesus would never have come into the world. There was no need. If man had the strength to live a godly life, he didn't need a saviour. God would just divide them up to the godly and the ungodly. But Jesus came to save because nobody is godly. All of sin. No one loves God as they should. We need Christ to save us. This is... The relationship between God and man is through the one mediator, Jesus Christ. Otherwise, there's no relationship with God. We can't come near to him. Deborah knew this. And that's why she encouraged Barak, go, go, and the Lord will go before you. But after this great victory, they sang, uh, Deborah uh, and Barak sang a, a song. And in that song, they give praise to God. God did all this. Now, I haven't got my notes with me, so uh, so my conclusion might slightly fail us a little bit here, but I hadn't planned to, to say too much on chapter 5, but just to draw a few, um, a few uh, references uh, from it. Um, at the beginning of chapter 5, you see that it's the Lord who's praised. It's not Deborah who's praised. 
No doubt if you ask Deborah, she'd say she was an unprofitable servant. She was just, she only told Bayrat what he should be doing. It's not really beyond anyone to say, thus saith the Lord. God says, believe on the Lord Jesus, follow him. So all the praise goes to the Lord. Verse 2, praise ye the Lord. I will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Verse 4, Lord, when thou wentest out, um, it was the Lord who did these things. And then... Um, Verse 20, they fought from heaven. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Well, it, it's not literally the, the stars, really. It's the whole of God's providence. The whole of God's work gave them the victory. They fought from heaven. And in our battle, as it, as it were, we're fighting from heaven. God is, is, I've emphasized so much, I hope now, God is, is with us in all that we're to do. And the Lord will be with you, fighting from heaven. Isn't that a strength to know that strength? Well, I hope you'll be encouraged and you won't be like that poor mother. Where is his chariot so long in coming? What a poor woman that was. She didn't point Sisera out of the way of evil she encouraged him in his evil doing expecting him to come home with more girls than he did the previous time what a miserable woman she was looking out the window where's his chariot where's he coming what's what's going to happen a worried mother but if we turn to the lord jesus and we point others to the lord jesus we can't guarantee what they'll do no one can guarantee what their child will turn out like but would have done our duty and done our thing and we'll be on the lord's side it's a lovely couple of chapters here but i must close with the last verse i remembered now what the what my note was at the end verse 31 so let all thine enemies perish O lord now the lord jesus says we're to love our enemies and it's quite right that we're to love our enemies. We're to seek their salvation. But for the unrepentant in the end, the people of God will stand with Jesus Christ in his judgment. And when he's set us at his right hand, and then the enemies of God come to be judged, and they're put at the left hand, and they're sent away into everlasting punishment, we'll be on the Lord's side. And we'll agree in God's judgment of the wicked. But at the present time, we desire the salvation of the enemies of God. But if people die unrepentant, if people die without Christ and they go to hell, we're not complaining about God's judgment on them. He's done the right thing. This is why we we don't like we don't like the sound of hell we don't like the thought of hell some supposed evangelicals have tried to put it out that hell doesn't really exist that it's just a grave and really people just perish everlastingly but the bible speaks in terms of everlasting punishment where the worm dieth not it talks of something that you won't be relieved from it is a very, very unpleasant thought. And we don't wish it on any of our enemies. We wish them to, to be saved. We wish them to turn to the Lord and be saved now. Their end will be much worse, if not, than a sword through the belly or a nail through the temple when they meet the Lord and they have to face God. It is terrible. But the Lord will save you think well how can i be saved it must be i don't want to end up in hell and i don't think i'm good enough but believe on the lord jesus christ he'll save you he'll absolutely save you so i've got nothing 
good about me. Just got to be absolutely honest. There's not a single reason why we should be in heaven. If we think there is, we've, we've really missed the point of who we are before the almighty, the holy and the perfect God, before the holy and glorious God. All of us are unclean. We're all unclean. Our righteousnesses, Isaiah says, are like filthy rags. Filthy rags. And so we, we only trust in Jesus Christ. A person that trusts in him is saved by the grace of God alone and is saved utterly. God's power, the good shepherd, will keep us. And that encourages us, you see. And that is why... Deborah could say to Barak, go, you'll be all right. The Lord will go in front of you and he'll be with you. So be bold. Don't be frightened. Uh, we, we, we're not to be horrible to our enemies, of course. In, we're not going to war with them like this. We're seeking to win their souls. We're seeking to win them for Jesus Christ. And it's the Holy Spirit that will do it. But he uses the foolishness of preaching and simple folk like us. And a lovely verse to close on in verse 31 still. But let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. Let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. What a glorious ending. You might want to put that on Brian's grave as well if you can fit it on. But let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. Those that love the Lord. Well, why do we love him? Well, he's loved us. He's, he's, worth, he's worthy of our love. God is so, to know the creator of this amazing world as your friend. It's, it's, um, it's incredible, isn't it? It's amazing compared to this ignorance of walking in darkness, following our own selves, which we've got to admit have gone astray, very astray. If it wasn't so, people would have sorted the world out by now. If people were naturally good, They'd have, got out, they'd have sorted out all this evil. Everyone would have got together and said, let's be really good. We'll make it really nice for everyone. That, 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 that's, what the, that's what the Marxists, I don't know if they reckon they can do that, but they reckon they've got to destroy everything else, get rid of all sorts, and we'll be all okay. We won't be. Only Jesus can do it. Them that love him, let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth forth in his mind. The sun is glorious, it's bright, it's strong, it's warming, it's powerful, it gives life. That's what the people of God have got. We've got life. The world without Christ is dead, dead in sin, and coming to a second death uh, uh, is, is coming to them as well. And the land had rest 40 years. Well, as we read, if we continue in Judges, I'm quite excited about Judges at the moment, but um, we will see what happens next then. But let's go forth this week. Uh, them that love the Lord as the sun in full strength. In the strength of the Lord Jesus. I'm not saying you've got any strength of your own. I'm not saying, come on, pull your socks up. You've got strength in you. We've got no strength. But the Lord goes before us and he gives his people victory and will bring us through to his glory. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank the Lord for this amazing story and we don't glory in the death of the wicked. Uh, Lord, we thank thee that we are spared from having to fight such fights as these people did. But we fight another battle, a spiritual battle. And it's just as hard. And those that are against us are quite mighty. They've got Satan on their side. They've got the world on their side. And there's a great many of them together conspiring against Christ. Even running churches where there's no gospel, where there's other, plenty of other messages about things, but nothing much about being saved by putting our whole hope in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we pray that thou would strengthen thy people that remain. And in our weakness, Lord, fill us with thy Holy Spirit, that we may know the presence of Jesus Christ 
is among us, whether we're two or three, whether we're on our own, that the Lord's going before us and after us and with us, that we may keep a good testimony, and that thou would keep us from backsliding into evil, where there's no one watching over us at times, Lord, when we're on our own. Lord, we pray for godly women like Deborah and like Jael, that, that, that they may not be um, discouraged by weak men, but they may encourage their men. And Lord, whether male or female, we pray, we, we pray that we may all encourage one another in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this lovely day here in the open air. And we pray for our friends that are in our normal place where we meet, where we can't be with them. And, and uh, we pray, Lord, that thou would provide a meeting place in the days ahead, that we may be back soon where we were, if that's thy will, and provide for thy people in, in other places at this time. Those that are unable to get out to church. Lord, we thank thee for friends in many different countries around the world who know and love the Lord Jesus. And we pray that would strengthen each one. Give us this um, help from heaven to not be afraid of the things that are against us. To know that the Lord Jesus will continually deliver his people. Help us to avoid evil and sin and to walk in thy ways. And that we may be those that love the Lord. And that go forth, as it were, with the might of the sun in full strength. Oh Lord, it is a great thing when we're weak. When we've got no hope in ourselves. To see the all sufficiency of our great God being for us. It is such a help and encouragement to us, Lord. We pray we may worship thee continually in the truth. And love the Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that we know that are outside of Christ. And we see this, this fearful end, this ruin that's upon those that stand up against God, against Jesus Christ, and deny him. Oh Lord, may they be saved and be put to trust only in our wonderful Saviour. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We sing the end of that Psalm 27, which we sang um, from verse 9 to 14 in the Scottish Metrical Psalms, verse 9 to 14. Psalm 27, verse 9. Far from me hide not thou thy face, put not away from thee thy servant in thy wrath thou hast and help her been to me O God of my salvation leave me not nor forsake though me my parents both should leave the Lord will me uptake. O oh Lord, instruct me in thy way. To me a leader be in a plain path. Because of those that hatred bear to me, give me not to mine enemies' will. 
witnesses that lie against me, risen up, and such as breathe out cruelty. I fainted had unless that I believe it had to see the Lord's own goodness in the land of them that living be. Wait on the Lord, and be thou strong, and he shall strengthen for unto thine heart. Yea, do thou wait, I say, upon the Lord. Just pray. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Saviour be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. 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 Is that in, in the psalm book? Oh, no, Jude. Psalm, is it? God willing, we'll have a um, service on three o'clock on Tuesday, a gospel preaching, and then a the beautiful sunset here. We get a bit of sun there. Oh, too bright for the camera. I'd like to show people a bit of the lovely view here and up and around some more trees. Good. Um, yes, I'll be home at five. Right. Oh, oh it's not. 